Good morning everybody and welcome to Carmel Hadfield. Now I know before you've had talks from Bob's boat, well this morning you've got a welcome from my tent. So it's the lovely great British weather, uh, up in North Yorkshire here it is pouring it down with rain. I'm sure it is back there in Glossop too, if there's one thing that I know about Glossop it's that it gets very wet just as much as here. So I'm sorry if there's quite a bit of noise because the rain is quite loud on the tent. And it's actually, it's a noise I love. I love being outside um, and being in nature is somewhere that I really feel God's presence. So it was something I was thinking about, talking about this week. Um, if you know me well or you see my pictures on Facebook, you'll often see pictures of me and Isaac walking through woods or sitting in waterfalls or swimming in lakes and that kind of thing. But then this week, I felt like God was saying to me, well, it's not just about where you feel God's presence. It's about where you see Jesus. So then that's what I was focusing on. And I was looking through the Bible and I was reading some of Hebrews 2. Um, and then I was reading some of Matthew 25. And I was just thinking, where is it that I feel like I see Jesus? So I thought, and I thought, well, when I see Jill doing Belly's Not Bins, that's somewhere I kind of see her showing Jesus' love to people. I see Jesus in the work that she's doing and the team around her and all the other people involved. I see Jesus' love as they help those in our community. I thought of Bob and Joy. I thought of all the homes that they've offered to so many different children. Um, that they've welcomed in, that they've taken care of and loved as their own. And that made me again think of Jesus, of that unconditional love and that real welcome that they gave. But I moved on, I thought of all the different charities and things, and then I came back to Matthew 25. And this is what it says. I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me into your home. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you took care of me. In prison, and you visited me. The righteous will then answer him. When, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we ever see you a stranger and welcome you in our homes, or naked and clothe you? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? The king will reply, I tell you, whenever you do this for one of the least important of these followers of mine, you did it for me. And it just made me think, you know, when we see people that need love, that need help, that need supporting, Jesus is saying, whatever you do for these people, you're also doing it. For me. So when we see people who are sick, people who are homeless, the asylum seekers and refugees, people who might be struggling with mental illness or addictions, people that might need a home, all sorts of different people that, well all of us in fact, that need Jesus and you know anything that we do for these people, we're doing it for Jesus. So. It made me think, where is it that I can see Jesus this week? And where is it that I can show Jesus' love to others? So I just want you to think about that as you kind of go through your week. Now, I know Bob's got a word for you in a minute. I'm sure it'll be fantastic, but I'm just going to open in prayer first. Dear God, thank you that you're here with us and you care for each one of us, that you made us all individuals and that you care so much for each one. God, I just ask that you will speak to us this morning, speak to us through Bob's word and speak to us as we go throughout the week. Just help us be more like you and help us show Jesus' love to those around us. Amen.
Beautiful out there, doesn't it? Calm, serene. There's about eight cruise ships out there with nobody on them. You can hear the waves gently crashing on the beach there. So peaceful. You know, I thought I'd just carry on this week a little bit about talking about when Jesus calmed that storm. You know, we, we never know when a storm is going to appear in our lives. We never know what's around the corner. Sometimes we use the phrase, you can sense that a storm is brewing, something's coming. Sometimes a storm comes that we're not really expecting. I was talking to somebody yesterday and they, they'd sail around Portland Bill. When they set off, it was beautiful weather. Weather forecast was great and all of a sudden, uh, a squall came, a bit like that story in the Bible. Uh, and they were really frightened. And you could see there were seasoned sailors, but they were really frightened when they came in because the storm was so severe. We never know when a storm is going to come into our lives. You know, I'm a strong believer, me, in, and I'm sure you are, 
in knowing the will of God, in knowing how God would want you to be, where he'd want you to go, and you would follow it. And that's what it says in Romans, doesn't it, that we find out what is that perfect will of God. There are times when we maybe don't follow the will of God and storms appear. I was thinking of the story of Jonah, and you know that well, where God called him to go to Nineveh and he tried to run away, so he got on a boat and the storm came and it finished him getting thrown over the boat, over the side. And you know, that storm came into Jonah's life because of his disobedience to the will of God. I really believe that it's crucial that we hear what the Spirit of God would be saying into our lives. You know, I also believe that, that God will give us what we need in the middle of a storm. Do you remember the story when Paul was going to Rome uh, and they, they were on this boat and Paul had said, it's better that we stay in port here and winter here but they pressed on and they went into a storm and uh, God stood by the side of Paul through the night and said, you will survive this storm. I don't know, have you ever been in a situation that you think, am I going to survive this? Is this going to take me down? Am I going to come through this? You know, I really believe that when our faith and trust is in God, we can stand on his promises. We can know what he says. We can hear him say, peace be still, when we really need to hear that peace be still. You know, there are so many times when something comes along that is not expected, it's almost unannounced. And like those people yesterday, they set sail, they thought everything was fine, checked out everything, and something unexpected come along. You know, Jesus gave a great uh, story, didn't he, about building your house on something that is solid, a solid foundation, so that when the wind comes and the storm comes, what you've built will stand. I think it was great when uh, Chris was using that, that as something that we can stand on. And, and I really believe that, you know, we need to be able to stand on something that's solid, something that will support us, something that will get, that will get us through to a safe haven. You know, it's, it's sometimes very unexpected. Sometimes it takes you by surprise. You know, some time ago, somebody bought me a T-shirt and it said, a calm sea never made a good sailor. And basically what they're saying, of course, is that you need to go through some rough seas and a few storms to give you the experience that you need to become a seasoned sailor. You know, there's a verse in the Bible that's quite similar to that. And not all the verses in the Bible are my favourite ones, and this isn't one of my favourite ones, but it's, there's some great truth in it. And it says... Count it all joy when you go through difficult times and trials. Uh, these have come that your faith may be shown to be genuine. And you become stronger in your faith. And, and it's a similar thing, you know, that when we go through challenges and storms in our life, you know, that we can then allow God to give us what we need and we grow and we become stronger. And our faith in him, as we stand upon his word, as we stand upon his promises, and we really do know that he will not allow us to endure anything that would cause us to sink. Praise his name for that. You know, there's something else to consider too. You wouldn't really want to go out into the sea without being fully prepared. You know, it's, it's, it's a dangerous thing really to go out and not have all the equipment and not have the training, uh, not have the right safety equipment. In fact, you'd be quite foolish to venture out without knowing and realizing that there's potential danger out there. I really believe that God gives us what we need, equips us to face any situation. In fact, what's that great verse that we say all the time? He's given everything, he's given us everything that we need for life and godliness. We've, we've got everything that we need. And yes, he's doing an ongoing work in each of our lives. 
another great verse I like. It says that uh, he who started a good work in us will continue and see it through till we're presented before the Father in heaven. You know, so God is going through all kinds of situations with me in my life, helping me. You know, when the storms of life do come, he's given me, he's given me the equipment that I need to face them. He's given me the training. You know, that's why we, we spend time, isn't it, reading our Bibles and praying and being full of the power of the Holy Spirit. And those are the things that we need to equip us in our lives so that we can go through the storms, that we can face whatever is out there with a confidence. But that doesn't mean to say, you know, there's another important point here. That doesn't mean to say that we go looking for storms. You know, it would be, he said he's given us wisdom, hasn't he? And so wisdom would say, you know, there's a storm brewing over there so you can avoid that. And you can seek that safe haven. Or if, if, the, if the weather forecast is, is saying, you know, strong winds and heavy rain, then you don't really need uh, lots of training to say, well, that's not a good idea to go out and face that and to be, get caught up in the middle of something that puts you unnecessarily in a place of danger. You know, I believe that God through his spirit gives us what we need to guard us against being put into positions where we're in, in a dangerous place. He safeguards us. You know, sometimes we don't throw our, our intelligence and our own out of the window, you know, because we can say, God, give me wisdom. Give me your wisdom to know what to do. Is this a good decision? Is this in your will? Is this what I should be doing? Is this a place I should be? Are these the people who I should be associating with? Because sometimes things like that sort of infiltrate into our hearts and into our spirits. It's like you're drawn into, uh, into a storm, which really you don't need to be into. You know, I really believe that God, through his great love for us, is watching over us every day. That gives me a great confidence and peace in my heart. So when I put all these, these things together, I can say, wow, this is beautiful. You know, God came, came to give us a great life. Some people think that to be a Christian and to follow God in your life is, well, you're going to miss out on some excitement in life. And really, I believe it's the way around. You know, with God in our lives, we have the most exciting lives. We can, we can do things with confidence because we know that he is with us. He's put his spirit in our hearts to guide us, to strengthen us, to teach us, to show us, to reveal himself to us so that when things come into our lives, and none of us are immune, none of us never have a storm that comes out of nowhere, none of us are ever going through a situation where we think everything's fine here, got everything's sorted here, and then from out of nowhere, the situation arises. God gives us everything that we need to face those situations and to bring us through victorious. I love that verse when it says, you know, that we are more than conquerors. We are more than, that means that whatever we face, we can emerge through it. We can emerge, we can come out of it as a victorious, overcoming winner. You know, I believe that God, when he comes into our lives, he makes us great survivors. So that when a storm comes or whatever happens, we'll come out of it and we'll go. Praise the name of the Lord. We can rely on you. We can stand on your word. We can stand on your promises. And the bottom line is if we find ourselves like those disciples who were fearing for their lives and they turn to Jesus and they said, help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. And he just stood up and he stilled the whole thing. Praise his name. I'm so glad I know the Lord in my life. I am so glad that his spirit dwells within me. I'm so glad that I know that whatever I face, whatever comes, whether it's a storm that's seen that's brewing or whether it's unexpected, however it is, I can stand 
on the word of God. I can stand on his promises. I can have that confidence. Praise his wonderful name. I'm just going to absorb this beautiful view for one more minute. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you're with us every day. Thank you, Lord, that you're with us in every situation. Thank you, Lord, that when the storms come, Lord, you can stand with us. You can see us through. Like you did with Paul and said, you'll get through this. You'll get through this. Or you can just speak those amazing words, peace be still. Lord, I pray that we will seek your will. We'll follow your will. We'll listen to what your spirit says. We'll avoid the things that we don't need to get involved with. We'll avoid the situations. We'll ask you for your wisdom. We'll allow you to lead us. We'll listen to what you say. And we'll give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So thanks again, Bob, for that word, and thank you, each one of you, for joining us again this morning. Now, hopefully, we should be able to meet up in our pods and small groups again soon. Um, now the school holidays are just about finished, I know that we've been trying to meet up in small groups on a Sunday morning. If that's something you're interested in and that nobody contacts you about, please do get in touch with us. But hopefully, somebody should be in contact if that's something you want to do. Thank you, God, once again for your word. Thank you for your forgiveness for each one of us and for your mercy over all of us. I just ask that you'll constantly remind us of your presence as we go through this week. 
and just guide our footsteps. Amen. Right, I'll see you all again soon, I hope. And I hope you're all staying safe and well. Bye. One, two, three, four. Hey, it's your birthday. Hey, it's your day. Hey, it's your birthday. So let us celebrate.